Welcome. We're continuing our discussion on the areas of regions bounded by curves. And this is our first region with sort of an irregular intersection. And what I mean by irregular, all the ones we've seen up to now intersected kind of like this. So we might have had a curve like this, one like this. So it was really easy to draw a rectangle whose smaller side, whose base was parallel to the x-axis, which told us that our integral would be with respect to y. But in this case, it's not so easy. If I try to draw this rectangle here, hum, it doesn't touch both equations. It doesn't touch both the red line and the black line. If I draw it here, it only touches the black lines. So I can't draw my rectangles in the same direction anymore. Now, and I'm going to use red to make it really pop, my representative rectangles need to be in this direction. And these rectangles have a base, so a smaller side that's parallel to the y-axis. So I know my integral is going to be with respect to y. So now how can I set this up? Let me erase this scratch work here. Well, we want to draw some kind of arrow going at my function starting at the top. And since we have this irregular intersection, the top is actually here. So imagine turning your page. So if you're standing, you're standing like this. And when you say hi, you're like this, hi, hi, mom. There you go, that's how you're standing. So the top of your head is here. Now that we have our orientation down, if I go ahead and draw this arrow, it touches the black curve first, then the red. So I know that the black one has to go on top. So I'm going to have my integral here I will have 2 minus y squared, and then I'm going to subtract something. And this part might also seem a little tricky to set up. Let me erase this representative rectangle just so we can really get an idea of what's going on. I have x equals the absolute value of y. So on this side it's x equals y, and here is x equals negative y. Now what to do with the rest of this? So I can't really just put the absolute value of y here. Since then, I'd have to look at cases for two different possibilities for y. But what do you notice about this picture? And I'm going to draw this line and maybe help. What do you notice about our graph with respect to that line? If you said the graph is symmetric with respect to this line, you're correct. So this area here is equal to this area here. So I can just go ahead and write y, dy, and that will give me just half of the area I want. It'll give me this. So I need to double this. Great, now let's think of our limits of integration. I have one intersection here at 0, 0, and another intersection at, take a moment, figure this out either algebraically or using technology. Okay, now that you've tried this on your own, you should see that you have an intersection of 1, 1. So my limits of integration are from 0 to 1. So my area is equal to this, or excuse me, my area is represented by this integral. So let's go ahead and integrate. Um, after a quick rewrite, though, I'm going to rewrite this a bit to be y squared plus y minus 2 dy. Let's integrate. So I have negative 2 times y cubed over 3 plus y squared over 2 minus 2y, and I'm evaluating from 0 to 1. So this is negative 2 times 1 third plus 1 half minus 2. And if you notice, when I evaluate at 0, this whole thing vanishes. So I'm just going to omit that. This works out to negative 2 times negative 7 over 6, which is 7 over 3, or just 2.33. I hope this video was helpful.